friends, we now invite you to join us for the Animation Academy. Please welcome your sketch artist, Michael Montgomery. That's me! How are we all doing today? Ah, oh, this is Florida winter. I like it. Nice and mild. The trees don't know if it's fall or winter, you know. All right, well, thank you all very much for coming out. My name is Michael Montgomery, and this month, January, March, uh, marks my 26th year involved with the Walt Disney Company. And I started my career back uh, in 1996. I was a Disney animator. I worked on Mulan and Hercules, Brother Bear, Emperor's New Groove, Tarzan, a little short called John Henry, got to work on Beauty and the Beast Special Edition. So it was just a lot of fun. And then I moved over to work in Disney Live Entertainment, which is just an amazing group of people that help put on big events like this at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. So, when they called me up and they said, hey, uh, could you draw for us for a few, you know, days? I said, oh, sure, yeah, where are at? They said, well, the American Garden Theater. I said, wait, the American Garden Theater where Disney on Broadway performs? Yeah. Well, I actually designed this stage uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm like, so I get to draw art on my art. This is cool. It's a really fun thing, so thank you for being here. Um, today, if you're, who's here in the morning? Anybody here in the morning? A couple of hands, a couple of hands, a couple of hands. Okay, you're going to have to go to uh, uh, an arts and crafts store by 2, 8, by 10 frames, because you're going to have a nice little set today. Because At the 12.30, we drew Cusco the human, and now we're going to go draw Cusco the llama. <laughs> llama face. I love Emperor's New Group. It was such a hilarious movie to work on. Really simple, great style, and uh, I will do my best to represent it. I'm, I'm picking my, I've got like nine blue pencils here, I'm gonna pick my favorite blue pencil. <laughs> the one that's sharp. All right, so Cusco Llama. He is, um, I, was, I was telling my friends and stuff, it's like, you know, I can draw Cusco Llama like really fast, and I don't wait, but I, I need to break it down simply so I can, you know, so you, all of you can follow along. So this one's going to start a little different. Most people, when you come here, are like, well, first start with a ball and a cross. Right? We're kind of going to do that. We're going to start. Now, he's got tall ears and a long face, so we're, we're going to fill in this page pretty, pretty well. But I'm going to look at the middle of the page, and then I'm going to come over on this side. So imagine there's a, a center. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make something about the size of a plum. I said golf ball last time and all the art came out really small, so I'm gonna try something a little bit bigger and it's a plum. Alright, so we're gonna draw and draw lightly. Draw very lightly because we're gonna make a lot of construction lines. And then we'll go back in at the end and uh, I keep forgetting to get my timer out. I apologize. There we go. Boom, there we go. Alright. So make your old one. And now um, I'm going to teach you the S curve. I love the S curve. The S curve is not this. We're not making the letter S. We're making a skinny curve, but just an elegant curve that goes out, comes in, and you can do that at different angles and all kinds of stuff. So this S curve here is going to come across the middle of the eye, just like that. There we go. I'll just leave it alone, just like that, for a little while. Next, we're going to come up here, and we're going to do his eyeball, which is the half of a circle because the other half is hidden behind the lid. You know Cusco. He's all like, I know everything. So he's always got that smirk on his face, even as a llama. All right, and then I'm gonna add in, down here, believe it or not, is a little smile line, a little laugh line. Then, come up over the top of the eye, and we're gonna make the bottom of his eyebrow, and that comes you know, kind of towards the top, comes up, arches over, comes down, and then stops. And now we're gonna talk about thick and thin shapes. So in Disney characters from perspective, if it's close to you, it's thick, if it's far away, it's thin, or if it has to have weight, we'll have one side be thick, one side be thin. Um, but also like in, you know, for most humans, uh, we have a thick side to our eyebrow, and then we, it tapers out down to a thin side of the eyebrow. So we're going to kind of follow parallel up the top, and you'll notice this shape that I just made, which is kind of a V or a rooftop. See, it's not, it's not a curve, it's not a square, but it's got a point to it. Um, as we continue this drawing, you're going to see that 
visual relationship, that, that kind of shape repeat itself. Now, at the end of his eyebrow, it actually goes up. Kind of makes a shape just like that. There we go. Now, so I started with the eye because for me, it was the easiest way to construct the rest of the face because of size relationships. Some characters, I start with the nose because that's in the middle of the face and we build around that and then I can get proportions from the outside. So what I do here is now we're gonna do math. Ugh, math, all right. So we're gonna take the eyeball and I'm, I'm gonna make a measurement here with my pencil. So have you ever seen an artist do this? I'm like, oh, I'm actually measuring. I'm like, mm, you know, that, that Under Armour hat right there is uh, that tall. And so I'm gonna measure my eyeball width and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna make a little mark. And then I'm gonna come to the bottom of my eye and make a very light line. Just like that. And then I'm gonna come down. And then where those guys meet is, is where my nose is feeling like it's gonna live. Then up here by the eyebrow, I'm gonna make a little dot at kind of like 11.30 right there. So now, what I like to do is when, I, when I'm drawing, you'll, you'll, I'm, I'm gonna talk a lot about marks and stuff. I like to have something to aim for. So I'm gonna aim between the two and I'm gonna draw a nice gentle curve between the two, all right? You'll be hard pressed to find a straight line on an animated character. So then from here, I then want to kind of, there's that, there's this kind of, you know, rooftop shape again. I'm going to come down and just make a little mark, you know, about that long, and then that's his nose. So then from here, I'm going to make just a construction oval. Do not press hard. We're just going to make an oval that's about the width of the nose that we just made. It's about that about that wide, and I just want to rough it in. Just get it, get it in there, get it down on the paper. Don't be harsh. Okay, why? So, from the middle of his nose, we're now gonna go the opposite direction, and we're gonna make a little curve that goes about the distance down of this ball, just like that. All right? Then, gonna go do an S-curve again. So now I'm gonna come out about this far, which is about the same distance as from the lower part of this oval to that line we just made, come out of here, and now I'm gonna start an S curve, and I'm gonna go up and down. See, I made my marks, and now I like to connect the dots. And then I'm gonna follow this ball that I made to right about there, all right? Now, I mentioned this in the last class, and it stays true because how did we know that Cusco was Cusco human, and then he becomes Cusco llama? Well, we took little pieces of Cusco human, and we put them into Cusco llama. So if you draw a smile for a cartoon character or a happy face, you always do this. It's kind of like a T, right? You make the dimple, and then you come out. Cusco is different. His T, or his, his dimple, goes just one direction, just like that. So I'm going to come up to where the mouth is, and I'm just going to give a little tick mark back like that. And the reason I drew the ball is because the nose of the llama actually flows into his smile like that. There you go. All right. Now, we have our nose and our smile. Now let's build his lower jaw. So taking this point that I made right here, I'm going to draw another light construction line goes straight down. And we're going to go down half the distance of his eye. So Taking my measurement, going like that, and then like that, and that's right, right about there. Now, I'm gonna make this really nice swooping curve. I'm gonna, I've got my two targets, the end of his lip, and I'm gonna make an S curve that connects down here. Have fun while you draw, sing, dance. Well, maybe not dance, but I like that fun. All right, so come back up to the eye, and then come down just about half the distance of the eye, right about there, and continue that curve. Pretend it never stopped. Just kind of make that S curve, come up, and flow. Flow to the next spot, right there. All right, and then go, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, stop. Stop just past where your eye ends, right about there, okay? So, now, we're gonna come up here to where the, eye, uh, the eyebrow is, come over just a little bit, and I'm gonna connect. 
Now see, I'm having trouble even me drawing this curve because I'm right-handed and I'm trying to go out with my arm. And as animators, we have desks that spin. And so I could have rotated my desk and then go this way, which is a lot easier. So here I'm fighting the natural mechanics of my right arm. So you have the ability to spin your uh, clipboard there. All right, so now we got his face pretty much locked in here. What we want to do is go back to the nose and give him his cleft, which is this little line that connects right there. And then on the other side of his face, just show an indication, like with a small hill, of his other eye and give him a little bit of an eyelash. All right. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to find my favorite line and I'm going to darken in that eye a little bit. Okay. Now, let's make him a llama. A little bit more here. We're going to come down to this side of the eye, come straight down, I'm going to curve out this way and make a little bit of kind of like a double chin, a little chin area down here. And then this curve that we just made, we're going to jump over, over, and we're going to pretend that we're flowing through that, and then we're going to make another S curve, just like that. All right, that's the front of his chin, or the front of his neck, actually. Llamas have very long necks. And then in the back, you can, you know, you can feel this sphere, even though we didn't draw it, you can feel it in here with that shape. We're gonna then come over here, and we're gonna make another S curve, and that'll be the back of his neck, just like that. All right. So now, Cusco's hair, which we don't see very often because he's always wearing his prince's helmet, but at the end of the movie we see it, but he's got this, uh, as a llama, he's got llama human hair. It's, not quite fluffy as, as a real llama. It's got the angles, though, that his hair does have. So I'm going to sit here. If you kind of look, I've just made the letter M with a weird shape, you know? Just kind of. And again, when you're drawing, if you're starting out, if you're young and starting out, it's all shapes. It's really just gluing the shapes together, finding those shapes, and then making relationships between other shapes, and then saying, oh my gosh. If I make an M, an egg, and a couple of things here, I've got a character. So I now swoop over. I'm, a, I'm about, again, the distance of his eye up, up here. Swoop over, give him the back of his head. And then I'm going to come down and make another big S curve. It's okay if it falls off the page. It's an intimate portrait of Cusco. All right. When we get down here towards your logo, if you're there, um, I'm just going to draw like the depth of his hair, which is right there. Just follow that through. And that's, uh, that's just a line that doesn't connect. And then let's go back to his neck and add some fur. So the fur is just, again, kind of a series of triangles that are a little sharp, you know. Um, like if this was Lilo and Stitch, they'd be really round. Um, Brother Bear, they're kind of in between. But the style of Emperor's New Groove, they're kind of sharp, just like that. All right, so I'm going to meditate for a second, and by that I mean I'm going to fill in the eyes and the eyebrows. This is a relaxing time. This is a time just to fill and draw in between the lines. Not something I encourage for youngers to draw inside the lines, but you know, this is cartoon character. I'm going to take this uh, shape that was up here and I'm going to continue it around because he actually has kind of, you know, his, this part of his face is flesh colored in the movie and then his hair is black. And so I'm just going to quickly oh, we're doing great. I wonder if they'll let me work out here for the rest of the day because the weather's just perfect today. So notice how my pencil sideways. I'm not grinding. I'm not acting like I'm writing a math problem. I am just gently going back and forth, trying to be even. Just trying to go no further down than the length of the width of my pencil web. 
And if I want it to go darker, I do it again. And if I want to add shading like underneath his chin, I just keep doing it until I'm happy. But it's all a process of building things up. There's no need to rush. For the professionals out there, we rush when there's a deadline, we get it. But right now, we're just having fun. Okay, so there's something missing, and that's his ears. So his ears are going to come off the page a little bit because, well, actually, let me think about that. What can I do here? There's, his ears move, just like Lama's ears move. Why don't we do this? I'm going to change my mind. Let's go down like this and make a big curve. Comes down like this. And then I'm gonna make like a bow shape. That there's an S curve at the very end. Right there. Because the llama's ears come to a rounded point. And then from that's the outside, so I'm just gonna come in just a little bit. Just a little bit, so we can see the inside of his ear and the outside of his ear. There, his ears are just pinned back now. And it's your art. You can, you know, it's your art. Go ahead, make that change. You know? Have your ears pointing straight up. There is no test at the end of this season. All right, there we go. Lava face. So, in the movie, um, I actually was on the second unit. Uh, California was the main unit, Florida was the second unit, and I was a visual effects artist. And a visual effects artist is, in the movies that you watch, um, I would make everything that did not have eyeballs. So, I would draw Cusco. I would draw Cusco if he was taking a bath. I would draw all the water and have it drip off of him. So in that moment in the movie where he's all wet after they fall over the waterfall and he shakes himself like a dog and all that water gets on Pacha, yeah, that's what that's the kind of stuff we did. Um, but if you're the next time you watch Emperor's New Groove, and I hope it's soon, on Disney Plus, available now, um, there is a, um, at the end of the movie, when Pacha and Cusco are trying to get the human remedy and they're fighting Cat Yzma and they're trying to grab that, there's that little vial that bounces everywhere and rolls. Yeah, that I, I, I drew the vial. That was, that was a nice summer of my life, just vial, 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 vial. Yeah. Oh, there's water inside? Great, swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Thousands of drawings, thousands. I couldn't be happier. I don't have another piece of paper here. All right, um, I think we're there. Let me see. Yeah, that's that's the stuff. Okay, so this is Lama Cusco, and I am Michael Montgomery. So here's my favorite part. I'm going to keep drawing, actually. So here's another little tip. How am I doing? Oh, I got plenty of time. So when we clean up a drawing, I know he signed it. Um, who's, I'm making my own rules right now. So when we clean up a drawing, um, the cleanup artist will sometimes at the bottom, like at this bowl shape, we'll make it darker and thicker to show weight. And then when we have things go in front of other items, like this lip goes in front of the top of the lip. So we'll make that a little bit darker a little bit thicker. But when we do things that are, you know, maybe closer to the sun or lighter, we'll just do a nice, gentle, thin line just to define the shape. So when you clean up your drawing, if you've now finished and gone through the light part of drawing, blocking it in, and you want to darken those lines, find your favorite line. Find the line that you go, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the best line I made. Because as you can see, when I was doing this, I made dozens of lines right here on his neck. So his neck's kind of messy. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to shoot in the middle. There we go. And I'm going to follow that S curve just like that. So, yeah, find your favorite line. All right. 
And then that way, with what I when I change my mind on this ear, I can then shape that ear more into the fur of his head and kind of hide those construction lines because you'll focus on the dark. Because the dark then says, this is what I want you to look at. There you go. Alright. Crisco the Lava. It's peaceful, isn't it? You're just listen, just drawing. Now, as the animators, uh, you know, we flip the paper in our hands to make one frame into another. So it, it sounds all nice and quiet here, but at work it's all like, like 30 or 40 different artists just flipping artwork all day. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now gonna come around the stage and I'm gonna take a peek at all your awesomeness, because I know it's awesome. I can't wait to see it. I heard a groan, come on, we're having fun. Come on. We're having the time. We're at Epcot. Wait, what is today? Today is Thursday? We're not at work. That's right. <laughs> All right. How are we doing over here? Oh, look at you. So, oh, oh, that's great. That's fantastic. I taught you how to do that. Man, I'm not great. Hey, nice. Very nice. Very good. Well done, sir. Very nice. Wow. Wow. I like yours. Yours, yours uh, feels even more sinister because you added a bottom lid. <laughs> That's great. You've seen the movie that many times. I love that. All right, how are we going? Fantastic, way in the back. Way in the back, I see you. I see you back there. Oh, that's great. Oh, very nice, very expressive. Look how you put that in there. And very nice, very nice. All right, I'm gonna take a, a selfie. That's why I can add it to the, uh, what did I do today? Let's see, I don't wanna take a picture of that. Here we go, and oh wow, look at the crowd. And I'm going to come over here. I'll get you on this side. There you go. And I'm going to take a picture with the artwork. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Th oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You came center stage to even make me look at Well, there you go. Thank you very much. You did a very good job. Keep practicing. Keep working. All right. I am Michael Montgomery. Thank you very much. This is the end of my time in Festival of the Arts, and I have had an amazing time here. I want to thank everybody back in the booth, all the nice men and women that have helped you get to your seat and handed out the paper, my friends in the back here. Everything has been just completely amazing. Please enjoy the rest of the International Festival of the Arts, and have a great 50th anniversary with Walt Disney World. All right? Come see the Broadway show tonight. It's amazing. All right, take care, everybody. Friends, thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Animation Academy. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts.